Now then, my friends, are you thinking of buying an electric car? An EV? Well, don't. Let me help you out. Do not buy an electric car. I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. Now, we're going to go on a road trip in today's video. We're going to head off up towards Blackpool and then around the Lake District in this, the Porsche Taycan, all electric EV, electric car, whatever you want to call it. We're going to have a, a little uh, drive around. However, this is going to be slightly different. Now, if you are a regular to the channel, you'll know that I've done electric car videos before and I've done road trip videos before however it's been in the summer let me noisy uh, internal combustion engines um, it's been in the summer this time it's in the winter it is a lot colder and for those of you that do not know uh, you get way less range on an electric car in the winter because it's a battery so your range goes down so it's going to be quite interesting i've also got some information to tell you that you are going to be quite interested in as well and a lot of the information that i've told you on the videos prior has actually come true since this video that I'm doing now. It's going to be exciting stuff. Keep me company. Now normally I'll say grab yourself a glass of wine, grab yourself a beer. Uh, this time I'm going to say grab yourself a hot chocolate, a nice warm drink, put some mittens on because it's probably as cold in the house where you are as it is outside here because nobody can afford to turn the gas on. Anyway that's controversial. If you're new to the channel do hit the subscribe button, click the little bell for notifications of when I upload new videos. Now let's get on the road and let's go. Now then, so we're on the road. Let me give you a quick uh, update. So 97% I've driven a couple of miles, um, 241 miles of range. That's right, 241 miles of range for 97% charge. And I think the full range was about 245 or 246 miles of range. Now, if you've watched my other videos, then you'll see that I did these road trips. I did John O'Groats to Land's End, but that was in summer when you got a lot better range. I think, put it in the comment section down below, go back and have a look. I'm pretty sure it was 270 to 280 miles of range, maybe a little bit more. So you're getting 40 to 50 miles of range less in winter because your batteries are cold. Now, uh, England is fairly cold, but if you talk to people in Canada, they'd probably say, nope, that's not cold. Um, I've seen EV owners in Canada say that they have uh, their electric cars and they can't take them out of the garage, they, can't, they won't work. I don't know whether there's any truth in that. If you are from Canada, please let me know in the comment section down below what your electric cars are like uh, in Canada in, in minus ridiculous amounts of uh, temperature. However, we're heading off today. We've got a range of, we've got 136 miles to go. We're going to Blackpool first before we go to the Lake District. Uh, also, last time when I did uh, the John O'Groats to Land's End and the road trips, uh, it was beautiful weather, the sun was shining, it was nice and warm. You could sit outside with a coffee and wait for your car to charge and watch the world go by. Now it's it's grey, uh, it's wet, uh, it's raining and it's miserable and it's cold. So it's not quite uh, as much fun as it was going on a road trip back in summer. So it's going to be interesting. There's going to be even more stress uh, because we're going to have to find chargers 
um, more often. Uh, and also, uh, because of the uh, cost of living crisis, uh, the electrics have gone up, uh, so it costs you more to charge your car. And since I've filmed, by the way, I've had lots of people contact me and say, have you seen? You were right, you were right, you were right. I said back in a video, I said, won't be long, by the way, before they wipe that smug grin off of all the EV owners' faces and charge them road tax. And what did the Chancellor uh, uh, announce in his budget just gone by a week or two ago? Because the OBR forecast half of all new vehicles will be electric by 2025, to make our motoring tax system fairer, I've decided that from then, electric vehicles will no longer be exempt from vehicle excise duty. All EV owners have to pay road tax. Well, you're going to correct me, it's not called road tax anymore, but you're basically going to have to pay tax. And I said, they're dangling the carrot. Look, come on, come on, get an electric car. You can, we won't tax you. You can have it for free, no taxes, no commit, no emission charges, nothing, none of that. Well, let me tell you this as well and you can tell me I'm right if you're watching this in three, four years time. You know the congestion charge uh, and the um, low emission charges, right? You'll be taxed on those too. And even though it's low emission, because what they'll do is they'll change the name of the low emission zone charges and it will become something else once everybody's got an electric car. So mark my words, you are basically being drawn in to something that will not work. Now I'm rambling on a bit here, uh, so we're gonna keep driving, but I do wanna tell you uh, a little bit more as well. So if you are thinking of buying an electric car, don't buy one, don't get conned into it, don't get fooled. I bought one, I'm on lease with this, and I'm hopefully flying the flag and saying don't buy one and giving you the warning flag. Do not buy one, don't fall in the same trap, don't do it, don't listen to the, uh, what's told what you're told on television don't listen to all the adverts that are coming up that are probably coming up on youtube right now as well in between it'll stop now and it'll go on to the new uh the new car hire scheme or whatever it is or car subscription the subscription for your car all that garbage don't listen to it don't buy an electric car right come on i've got some more interesting stuff to tell you as well and porsche i'm coming for you sorry porsche i'm coming for you i want my money back Right, so we are down to 87% of battery and 215 miles of range. Um, now, it's interesting because I've had quite a lot of emails off of EV owners. I'm going to read uh, one of them uh, when I get to the service station. I'm going to get myself a, a little latte or a latte or whatever, and uh, I'll have a chat with you because I've also got a message for Porsche who owe me some money and they're not giving it me back. Uh, so we'll go into that. Um, but um, what's interesting is the emails that I've had off of these EV owners, I've had about three off of people that own electric minis who said, I can't stand it. I've bought one. I've had to, I've had to, I'm trying to send it back. I can't take it. It's not getting the range out of it. Um, move over, move over one second. Come on, move over, move over. Just stay in that lane. That's all right. Don't let me over. Uh, okay. Let me get back in here. Sorry, bear with me one second. I don't want to be that person that just hogs the middle lane. Um, so it's interesting because a lot of people that have emailed me have got minis and they've had issues with them. 
and saying that the range is is not enough and one of them actually sent it back they took it back they said it's not their words were it wasn't fit for purpose and i don't think evs are fit for purpose unless you're just doing roundabout town um and you've got all the ev owners who were originally smug with me uh, in the comment section or oh, it's cheaper to run and blah 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 it's no longer cheaper to run you're now going to be paying taxes as i've just said by the way i did just say that where you're going to birmingham now uh, and london where you've got your low emission uh, zones and you're not having to pay those um they will change mark my words they will change and it'll change to city zone or they'll call it something else once everybody's got an electric car and you know i'm right so all these benefits for electric cars it's just to draw you in they've taken one away already with your road tax or whatever it's called now uh, and it will continue it will continue and look at this hear me out please i know i'm rambling but hear me out i'm trying to get the message across to anybody that thinks that electric cars are the future and it, all these things are now coming out that i initially said look at the government look at the look at the the, the leaders of the world leaders they're still driving around in whacking great range rovers burning their fossil fuels why haven't they got an electric car why aren't they driving around in an EV or an electric Mini or a Tesla? Um, you know, and you might look at Grant Shapps. Uh, he, he has a uh, he has a uh, Tesla, I believe, um, but he doesn't use it all the time. You know, they'll use these things to put it out there and have the pictures taken of them. Look at me in my electric car, and then go and get in the Range Rover. So don't fall for it don't be like it's, it's pretty much like and i've not got a tinfoil hat it's pretty much like george orwell's is it 1984 where everyone will do as they're told everyone will follow honestly please don't do it don't buy an electric car i've gone on and on and there's lots and lots of channels on youtube about electric cars and how great they are but they're sponsored they're sponsored and they're, they're there and designed to tell you that. Um, it's like Top Gear, Chris Harris, I said this before. He said, you know, he said something in Top Gear, it's the future, I'm okay with that. Then there's a picture of him in his own car, which is a massive great M4 or whatever it was. I don't know, some big gas burning BMW. It's just because the BBC probably told him to say that honestly this is not the future we're going to carry on driving i'm going to show you we're down to 85 percent 210 miles um a lot of the charges by the way that are around the uk at uh, the infrastructure don't work they're out of order they're uh, low uh, they give you low voltage also incidentally by the way tesco where you had your free charging uh now you don't get free charging they've started charging you for it been told that um so there we go F got a little funny thing for you uh, to tell you as well that people who love internal combustion cars and diesel cars you'll love this i'm going to tell you this one in a minute but let's uh let's go and find a place to get a coffee because honestly i need my daily shot of caffeine come on onwards <laughs> services one mile you know what i'm going to carry on for a little bit longer because i have my favorite services you know uh, the fortin one which looks like a mushroom uh, on the way up to blackpool this woolly edge one uh, is in a mile i'm not keen on that one to be honest i have my favorites i have my favorites now then, let me turn that fan off so you can hear me properly so uh, i was going to tell you i read a little news story and it, it made me giggle i have to say <clears throat> it was in um I can't remember what it was. It was in some, I don't know, some web page that I was scrolling through. But somebody sent it me, uh, and I can't remember what it was a link to. Uh, it wasn't the Sun newspaper, by the way. Uh, it was some link that somebody sent me. Anyway, they said, oh, look at this, you'll find it amusing. And I couldn't stop laughing. I nearly spat my living tea out. Basically, this guy had uh, ran out of charge in his electric car, which you don't do in an electric car if you can avoid it. 
uh, and I can hear all the EV evangelists now out there, you know, saying, oh, have you never run out of uh, petrol then? You know, anyway, this van came up, uh, roadside assistance, right, came up with a diesel generator to charge his car up to get him to the next charge point. And when they got him to the charge point, it was out of order. So, so, so they had to charge him up again with the diesel generator. Basically, we're being sold a lie with electric cars. I've been sold a lie with this, but I knew what I was getting into. And I've said before, for those who haven't seen the videos prior, I do love the way that these cars drive. They are immediate power. But that's about it that you know and it's not new technology at all it's old technology look back we had electric cars years and years and years ago it's not new technology at all and if you also look as well i've, been, I've done i've done my research the minerals this is why we're being sold a lie the minerals that are used to uh, make the batteries and the components in these cars we're actually running out of we, it, I think we've only got so many years left of minerals for these, so what happens then? Obviously, it's not their intention to have electric cars as the future. It's the intention of the larger, the, you know, the, I won't say it, but the, the people above who, you know, who run the world's economy. It's the intention to make people not drive anymore. Uh, and it's, make, it's to make the rich richer, the poor poorer, and they don't want you to drive. They'll, they'll price it out so that you can't afford to drive, and only the super rich will be able to, uh, get in this lane. The only, only the super rich will be able to afford to drive. And believe me, they won't be driving electric cars. Why have I gone in there? I need to overtake again now. Um, they won't be driving electric cars. They'll be driving internal combustion engines because that is the car that's here to stay. They'll make them cleaner, they'll make them more efficient, which they're doing already. But this EV fad, which is what it is, my mum used to say fad, this EV fad, it's here for a reason. It's here to price people out of buying cars. And it's just, you're being sold a lie. Open your eyes and look. And I'll probably get, you know, I've had threats before in, in, in emails telling me to stop going on about electric cars and giving the electric car community a bad name. There aren't, if you look around, there are very, I haven't seen anybody who's basically telling you all the pitfalls of an electric car and trying to tell you not to buy one because it's all a media marketing machine and it's all about on the news plows you with adverts i can guarantee if you're not on youtube premium you will have an advert for an electric car right in within this video somewhere there will be an advert for an ev electric vehicle in here i'm 90 percent sure let me know in the comment section down below right come on 79 percent, 196 miles of range tell you in winter it's even worse and I'm going to read you some uh, messages in a bit as well, off of uh, a message off of a viewer. And also I want to tell you about this letter and Porsche, I want my money back. interesting by the way watching this back in I don't know 2035 or 2030 or whatever because do you remember diesel cars when they first came out over in the UK sorry about the road noise it's a noisy road that's um, when they first came out in the UK I think it was Gordon Brown and there was like oh you know we'll give you tax benefits for using a diesel car because it's cleaner for the environment and uh, now we've got TV commercials on in the daytime, um, you know, <laughs> that you get a free pen with as well if you sign up today. Uh, normally Michael Parkinson advertising it. Actually, you get, um, I don't think he does this one though, where he goes, did you buy a diesel car between this year and this year? 
Well, get in touch now because you could be entitled to a payout of whatever. It's going to be the same with these electric cars. Were you sold an electric car between this date and this date uh, and told that it was better for the environment? Which technically it isn't better for the environment. It is better for cities and, and, and places because you've obviously got, you know, less rubbish coming out of your exhaust in the city, but you're only moving it from elsewhere. Um, you know, with the power to this battery comes from somewhere. Uh, and a lot of countries, as I've said before, still use fossil fuels to burn to put the electric in this battery. So, and then you've got to get rid of these batteries as well. And don't forget mining these batteries. If you do the research yourself, you're actually using batteries in this car that are mined by children, basically. So there's children mining the minerals for these batteries. It makes no sense whatsoever. So if you are watching this back in 2030 or 2035, just pop a comment in there and say, blimey Lee, you were right. You hit the nail on the head. Come on, this is not getting me coffee though, is it? Oh, blimey, I tell you what, it is foggy at the moment. Not really into this time of year, I have to say. I'm more of a summer person. However, uh, it will be interesting to see uh, going on a road trip in the winter and see charging up, etc. So stay with me. We're going to do a trip up to, like I say, to Blackpool, then up to the Lake District. Whether we get it all done in one episode, I'm not sure. Might be go over a couple of episodes. But I know there are a lot of you out there who do like these EV vlogs, and I try and make it a little bit more interesting than just being in the car we'll go and grab a coffee and you know along the way we might grab something to eat or whatever um that might be on the next one um but uh, coming up by the way uh, just to let you know um i am doing a video i'm going to a place called irene's in blackpool uh, or just outside of blackpool and she does a, a an all day all you can eat breakfast for seven pound 95 or something and kids under five or whatever eat free absolute madness all you can eat anyway that's not why why you're here is it we're here for electric cars i just can't help but think i'm telling you what my thoughts are by owning an ev i can't help but think that we're being uh, herded like herded is that a word uh, like a flock of sheep you know move that way go that way go that way into the trap and then whoosh, like a lamb to the slaughter and then once they've got you and then that's it sorted you know they've got exactly what they want because that's why they're trying to push you into getting an electric car you know years ago there was a guy who invented a car that ran on water and he disappeared nobody ever saw him Mis mysteriously disappeared which is probably what will happen to me if i keep going on saying don't buy electric cars i'll mysteriously disappear well uh, you know if i do you'll know why uh, but honestly i've had people email me thanking me um from stopping and buying electric from stopping them getting an electric car we was thinking of getting an electric car after watching your video we haven't done it's getting more and more expensive to own an electric car ev owners were originally on my channel in the comment section oh it's cheaper if you charge it at home and do this and do that it's now getting more expensive so it will cost you more ultimately to own one of these cars and initially to even purchase one so if you look at the purchase value they're more money than an internal combustion engine you'd be better off getting yourself a, a diesel or whatever i mean i filled my girlfriend's uh, vw golf up the other day admittedly it did cost me i think 90 pounds but i looked and i said to her that is that right she said yeah it was like nearly 800 and odd miles out of a tank i thought that's mad absolute madness now i've charged this up last night at uh, at uh, home and um what did i what did it cost me cost me i think it cost me around about i'm trying to say it used to be about 18 pounds but now it's costing me almost double that because of the rate increases on your electric and it's going to increase again as well and if you're charging also now on uh, public chargers it costs you astronomical prices now 
and the amount and the amount of miles and range that you get out of it it isn't cost effective at all it's going to cost you more to run one of these in the long run than it is to run a petrol or a diesel car so don't be fooled do not be fooled come on onwards slowly because it's foggy just park up here oh right I'm gonna get myself a coffee now <clears throat> I'm at 63% uh, battery uh, let me turn that off one second and 140 miles of range I'm not gonna charge up yet uh, because there's not really any need at the moment so we're gonna try and not stress about it uh, try and get to Blackpool and then head off up to the lakes and charge a little bit then um, because it's better that you charge when it's lower uh, because then it charges faster and this car does have a fairly fast charging rate incidentally by the way I'm gonna get a coffee then I'm gonna tell you about the story that this guy sent me uh, one of the viewers about his electric car and also about Porsche uh, who still owe me some money and haven't given it me back um, so I'm coming for you Porsche I want my money back but this is going in for a service in about 3,000 miles and it's interesting because I said, um, how much is the service? And I think it was about £700. I was like, what? Uh, six or £700? I said, what do you actually do? And they stumbled onto the guy on the phone. It was, it was not Porsche Nottingham. It was somebody from a central dealer. <clears throat> and they said, um, well, it's, um, it, it, it has moving parts still. I said, well, what? The wheels and, well, yeah, the wheels and the brakes. And I said, what else? And he said, uh, well, it, you know, it's, it has to go in for the service and we have to check that it's safe. I said, but what are you actually servicing? Because you can't get into the battery. So what actually else is there to service? And he said, oh, we have to plug it into the computer and it's diagnostics. And I thought, this is, a, you know, what's that smell? It's bullsh. Anyway, enough. Come on, onwards. Selection there. One yeah. inch. Sorry. Yeah. A green Krispy Kreme. No thanks. Uh, could have an England one though. Uh, I think I might just go for sprinkles. Keep it simple. Or Biscoff. Do I go for Biscoff? I might go for Biscoff, actually. first off is um, obviously I've set this up and got into my car and set the camera up and just didn't leave it here my car was open when I got back and it's done it a few times now the bonnet opens on its own and the whole car opens so I was a bit worried because I've got thousands of pounds worth of camera equipment in my boot and I'm zipped in there quick and thought oh what's going on has somebody gone in the car but it isn't this car just keeps opening on its own for no reason I don't know why must be some kind of and I've seen it online a lot of other people are having it as well um first of all by the way Porsche um I'm gonna hide my VIN number here etc and personal details right but let me just read you this so 
Uh, Portia Nottingham, I do love you, but please, can I have my money back, please? Uh, Portia sent me a letter. Um, and when I bought this car, it was missing a couple of items. It was missing, missing a uh, phone charger in the middle because of the semiconductor uh, shortage and also the steering rack, electric steering rack. And I got a letter saying that they can't do the electric steering rack. Basically, I'll put a, a shot of this up on the screen so you can read it all, but because I won't read it all out because it's, it's just boring, isn't it? Um, so <laughs> they can't resolve the situation, basically, uh, for the retrofitment. They was going to retrofit the steering column, the electric steering column. Uh, it said they can't do that. Um, uh, it says, we will, of course, the most important bit, uh, reimburse you for this uh, for the product content that has not been fitted. Please contact your supplying Porsche Centre for £360, including VAT reimbursement, to be processed, right? So, uh, da, 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 in addition, blah, blah, they'll do the software, whatever. So I rang Porsche Nottingham. Listen, Porsche Nottingham, I do love you. And I know it's not you and it's probably your, the people above that probably keep trying to tell you to put me off. Now this letter was written to me in July. We're now nearly in December. Uh, and I still haven't got my money back because uh, I rang twice and then you basically put me off. And then I went in and I asked the guy that was there and he went, oh, well, we've got to get in touch with head office who will then sort that out for you. Went back in a few weeks later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's difficult to try and get in touch with head office to get that money back. And then I spoke to my mate there who, it's probably nothing to do with him really. You know who you are. And he went, yeah, a lot of people are just basically having the money took off the, the car and the next car, which I could do. Uh, I, you know, next time I have a car from him, I could take that off. But I don't want to do that. I want my money back. So can I have my money? I don't like to use my channel as a way of, prizing things out of people but can I have my 360 pounds it's it's Christmas and you know I could give that to my children rather than in Porsche's pocket uh, so uh, you know if you wouldn't mind could I have it back are you listening I know you watch my videos put that through to the right office I'd like my 360 pound back or I'm making a special video on it anyway that's uh, and I love you Porsche Nottingham by the way but can I have my money back right Let's go on before we carry on, by the way. Um, <laughs> I'm going to kill me. When I, no more free coffees for me. And the lady on reception, by the way, as well. Hi. Um, so, William uh, Bailey, Bailey, William ba Bailey, sorry, I'm just trying to pronounce your name. Uh, here's a picture of him on screen now with his uh, BMW uh, electric vehicle. Um, and he's basically, he wrote a... Uh, he wrote an actual email to me. Uh, where is it? I've got to try and find him. Sorry, I'm just trying to find it here. Right, here we are. So basically, uh, he's had an issue with his BMW. So shame on you, BMW. He uh, says his BMW iX3 has developed a, developed a fault. No longer charges on anything uh, but a fast charger. So he'll, he can, it'll charge on a fast charger. Such an inconvenience. And the earliest appointment I can get at a dealership is January. BMW HQ are not interested. I've emailed, phoned, and I get people who are either rude or unknowledgeable or both. Because a lot of people don't know anything about EVs, you see. So disappointed in the customer service. Uh, I've had Fords that offer better customer service experience. Um, he's on about now going to a, a hybrid. I said, would you, go, uh, would you go back? He says, I love driving an EV. Admittedly, I chose it because of the... Um, Low BIK rate as a company car driver. I presume that's something to do with company car tax. Uh, but it's uh, too much hassle and stress at times. I'd hate to go back to an ICE, but at this point, uh, also being completely disappointed with BMW customer service, uh, I'd ask, happily trade for, for a hybrid. But it's interesting because I've had quite a few people message me who have EVs now, and they're finding it more and more difficult uh, to deal with them on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, because they are not the future. As I say, we're being herded uh, like, a, like a herd of sheep. Is that like a flock of sheep into where they want us to go? Don't fall for it. Don't fall for the big EV lie. Uh, it, I'm not going to go through trying to show you again. I'm going to tr charge up later and show you how expensive it is. But these chargers are always full. Uh, it's now freezing. I'm, I'm cold. I'm going to get in the car in a minute. Eat my eat my Krispy Kreme. I got the Biscoff, and then we're going to head off on the way. 
uh, but you'll see it is more expensive it's you don't get as many miles in in the cold weather it, by the way if you are in Canada please please let me know what what your EV cars are like in extreme temperatures because this is freezing but to you this is probably warm anyway let's get back in the car and get back on the road come on onwards oh. Oh. tell you what at least the cup holders are good in this car oh blimey right oh I'll drink my coffee we'll get back on the way I'll tell you what though with Porsche you know it's amazing isn't it because if I owed them 360 pounds I bet they'd come chasing for it a lot quicker so come on Porsche I want my money back otherwise I'm making a special video on you yes and I will come on I want it back send me a check oh right let's get on the way onwards You know, ultimately, you will do what you want to do. And if you're looking at an electric car and it's in your mind, you'll probably go and buy one if it's stuck in your mind. And uh, it will it will be a, a mistake. Uh, that's what I think anyway. These are only my opinions. Um, but I have had this now for coming up to a year. And I know the pitfalls. And I know I've opened my eyes and I can see exactly what is happening and I can see that this is not the future it's all very nice how it drives but the actual reality of it, it it doesn't make any sense whatsoever it's not new technology at all um and I think the only the only real use for electric vehicles is probably on electric scooters or electric bikes or whatever but even if you look at electric scooters this will prove a point that we're being controlled and pushed into doing things that we don't want to do because of this it's all about that uh, a good friend of mine calls it the scratch show me the scratch it's about all about the money it's all about the money because local councils have these electric scooters now think about this they're all over the place thrown on the sides which are dangerous for people who are visually impaired um, but they won't let you and they won't legalize personal private scooters now a private scooter you wouldn't leave it lying around on the sidewalk on the, on the pavement sidewalk on the pavement would you you'd actually take it with you you'd take it home because it's yours so you wouldn't have people tripping up all over this junk that's all over the place and it's not about safety it's about money it's about money and it's about get out of the way of this you can see I'm indicated mate white van men white van men you're all the same right no you're not <laughs> in case you're a viewer <laughs> you're not he is <laughs> backpedaling uh, anyway it's all about control because otherwise they'd legalize uh, electric scooters personal electric scooters they don't want to because the councils are making money out of it and they'll make money whatever way they can so and it's normally down to the motorist or the or the pedestrians or whatever it's, it's normally down to the motorist but there you go so it shows you it's all about control buy an electric car buy an electric car free tax give you free road tax there you go oh no we're going to take that off you but but still uh, you can go into the cities and you won't have to pay the low emission zone going to take that off you it's now city zones but remember i've said that right it's now city zones all right uh, well you, it's cheaper anyway because we put fuel costs up there you go electric electric's gone up oh yeah hmm uh, actually it's not the future uh, and that's it you're done you're sorted you're in a box you're there it's a lamb to the slaughter remember that remember it when you're watching this back in 2030 or 2035 come on onwards yes.
Oh, right, 48% of battery left. 106 miles of range. Um, so, you know, there you go. It's not, winter takes its toll on EVs. Anyway, my mum used to say, um, she used to have a little Renault Clio and she loved having her car. It was her freedom, it was her enjoyment, it was her pleasure, and that's what she used to say. It was, it, it, and when that was, when she unfortunately got dementia, she started to get that she couldn't have her car as much and she said that was the one thing that she missed the most because uh, I, I used to say to her what oh, do you miss the most you know, you know now you can't go out and get around as much she said I miss my car she loved her car um, and I even renewed a license for her blessing because it wanted renewing um, I was sat at McDonald's in Leicester and uh, and she knew she wouldn't be able to drive again but we renewed it and uh, she never did drive again but she used to say to me it was it was all about enjoyment pleasure and freedom and these things take away the enjoyment because of your range anxiety and you can't go as far they take away the pleasure because you've, you've got they've got nothing all right they go fast but then again a Bosch washing machine goes fast and in fact it sounds pretty much like a Bosch washing machine so it takes away the enjoyment and the pleasure from driving and the main thing that it takes away because and they will listen if you buy electric cars and you let this happen your freedom will be taken away from you because ultimately I can tell you now the poorest of people and, and the and middle class people, working class people, will not be able to afford to drive. And these things are taking away our freedom. So that, as I say, this is only my opinion. And you may disagree. You may agree. Pop it in the comment section down below. And, I'm, and you may be getting to 2030 and you're watching this and the road is full of electric cars and everybody is happy and smiling and, you know, and... It's all like a, a, a modern love story for electric cars. Or it could be, you know, a modern horror story, but uh, who knows, as I say, just my opinion. But pop it in the comment section down below. Anyway, uh, I'll keep it at this speed. 47%, 107 miles left uh, of range. <sighs> Come on, onwards. Right, well, so I'm in Thornton Cleveleys. Thornton Cleveleys. Just looking for a parking space now, which I think is part of Blackpool. Um, it's a seaside town anyway. I've not been here before actually. Cleveleys Kitchen, fish and chips. Ooh. But we are going, and you'll see in the next uh, episode, to a place called Irene's, hopefully. I can't find it, though, uh, which is a really, really cheap breakfast. So uh, I'm looking forward to that. Anyway, let's park up um, and then um, I'll just have a quick chat and I'll leave you with something before we, before we, I say fill up, charge up, because we need to find out how much it's cost, don't we? I think parking's down here. I'll have a go down here. Right, okay, so Thornton Cleveleys. Right, we're gonna have a look around, I'll go and film. Now, while I go and film and do this video, rather than me just putting my cam hand over the lens, you know, like you know, other people do, they go, oh, I've seen him in it, and I've done before. I'm gonna leave you with a little something before I come back. That I think, let me just turn this off, that's blowing. That these cars at the moment, like these EVs and electric cars, they don't have any soul, but they don't have any character either, do they? I mean, this is a nice looking car, don't get me wrong. It's a, it's a Porsche, but then you've got your Teslas that look like a, 
a chamfered smarty, basically, doesn't it? I mean, you're not going to see a Tesla in a in a motor museum in 40 years' time and go, oh, my word, I remember that from my childhood. Wow, you know, with Bodie and Doyle spinning around it. It, it, it won't. It just looks like it. That's it. It's a chamfered smarty. That's what a Tesla is. Um, it's just... They've got no character or anything. So I'll leave you with a little something while I go and film uh, that I hope you enjoy. So uh, sit back, grab yourself a coffee, and just enjoy this from uh, Cars from Times Gone By. I am the voice of Night Industry 2000's microprocessor, K-I-T-T -T for easy reference, a kit if you prefer. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Batmobile. Let's go. What a 42-carat plonker you really are. <laughs> Right, my friends, so we're back on the road. Um, I've got to tell you, by the way, do not miss this breakfast that I've just filmed. Honestly, it's the best value for money breakfast I have ever seen, ever filmed in my entire life. So you've got to see it. It's unbelievable. It really is. Let me get out of here. Um, there we go. So cars like that, iconic, my friends, iconic. You won't get that anymore. We're gonna, we're gonna lose all this. Or, 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 gonna lose it all. I can't, I just can't explain it. You're not gonna get stuff like that. You know, the General Lee and and, and Knight Rider and Hardcastle and McCormick. Whoever remembers that one as well. You're just not gonna get any of that. Thank you. It's, uh, it's. It's sad, really, isn't it? Anyway, what we need to do now is we're at 40%. Uh, we've got 93 miles of range left, and we're heading now towards Ulverston, which is in the Lake District. I'm going to go and do some uh, videos and some filming up there. Let me get around here. There's trams here as well. Um, and, uh, yes, yeah, so I'm looking forward to that. So let's get back on the road, uh, and let's see, basically, how much it's going to cost me to charge up. It's going to be interesting. Now, this is the point where range anxiety starts kicking in a little bit because we've got 85 miles of range left, right? 
36% of battery. We've got 56 miles to go to get to our destination in the Lake District. However, when it gets down to around about 25, 30%, then you start to go on limp mode, which means the car doesn't accelerate quite as quickly. Uh, and it starts to go a little bit slower and a little bit more sluggish and start to warn you that you're running out of battery. So this is where it starts kicking in. And I can't see any anything at all on here, any places to actually charge up at the moment. So I'm guessing I'm either gonna have to charge on the motorway um, where I'm gonna pay inflated prices for the electricity um, and also wait again uh, and now it's cold and it's, it's winter, uh, so it's not quite as nice, you know, sitting outside in the sunshine, having a coffee or whatever, or a, you know, a, a soda or a pop or whatever you want to call it. Um, so it's not quite the same. The reality is now that it's, it's a, it's a baying really, isn't it? It's a, to coin a phrase, it's a pain in the backside really, um, because this is going to add on to my journey I think to charge from about 30%, depending upon what charger it is, I'm going to be waiting around for nearly an hour. Whereas I could just go into a filling station, fill up and be on my way, adding minutes, just a few minutes to my time. Uh, whereas this is going to, in fact, if I'd got a petrol or a diesel car, I probably could have made it, if I'd got diesel, up to the Lake District and back again without filling up. So this is the reality, my friends. It's, uh, it's all a lie. It's the EV lie. The big EV lie, that's what it is. We're being lied to. Look at this. The future is amazing. The future is electricity. The future, are, the future is EVs, electric cars. No, it's not. You're talking out your backside. You just want to get us into these cars and ultimately put us off the road. Price is out of stuff because that's the way it's going. As I say, it's just my opinion, and I may be wrong. In fact, have I ever been wrong? What did my dad used to say? I've only ever been wrong once, and that's when I thought I was wrong, but I wasn't. Where's the nearest charging point? Well? One moment please, your entry is still being processed. Okay. I have found no results for this search. Please say your desired destination again. I desperately need to charge my car. I need to charge my car. Take me to the closest charging point. Come on. Come on. One moment, please. Your entry is still being processed. Oh, we found one. 13 miles away back towards Blackpool. Ah. Shall we charge Blackpool Road 6, 22 KW in Preston? Would you like to start oh, with no. guidance? Uh, no, no, I don't want to go there. Right, okay. See, this is the issues that you're going to have if you have an electric car. Well, there we go. It's found one charge point. Get Stop, shut up, I'm trying to drive. Uh, anyway, come on, onwards, I can't concentrate. This is just, see, it takes away your concentration trying to find charge points and looking for where to charge. Now the, the whole screen's just gone off. The whole display has just gone black. There's nothing on it. Fantastic, it's just, I can't show it you, but it's literally just, it's crashed. So it's just gone. Absolute madness, ridiculous. <sighs> Thank you.
Right, so uh, I've still got no screen on. I've just got a black screen on there now. So I can't see anywhere where I'm going or any information. Uh, so this is really clever. Just because I asked for where the nearest charge point was and it came up with one in Preston. I mean, I, I don't need this stress. Um, 66 miles of range left, 29%. Um, I know where, luckily, I know where I'm going now because, as I say, I used to, I grew up in the Lake District, so I know where I'm going. But all this stress, you just, I, I passed them out four or five filling stations. You'd have just filled up. What? Well, it's just literally one big lie. We're being lied to. EVs the future, electric cars are the future. Come and get an electric car. Done. It's, don't, don't fall for it. Don't please. I'm going to say this, for God's sake, don't buy an electric car. Come on, onwards. Right, I'm going to have to pull into the services and reboot my car. You know, it was interesting because um, over lunch I was just reading some news stories that popped up uh, and I thought you know I'd give it a go because that seemed interesting I never read the news I haven't got time and it's pretty much all lies anyway uh, but this one actually looked quite interesting it said at the moment when you go on an aeroplane you get two pilots you get the main pilot then you get the co-pilot in case something happens to the pilot you know like a heart attack or whatever um, it could have any it could, it could be anything and the airlines now are looking at just having one pilot and the second because they're saying well if anything happens to the pilot it's all going to be automated so the plane can land itself or it can be remotely controlled uh, let me just help you out here uh, airline industry by the way if that happens i know what technology is like count me out i won't be flying again thank you very much right because I want a co-pilot. I want a real person there. Everything's becoming automated. This is what, it's, it's all wrong. I mean, even Aldi, if you're from the UK, even Aldi now, uh, in Kirkstall in Leeds, they started putting automated tills on. And they've just got like, I think one person now working on a till. And they're saying, oh yeah, I spoke to them, we're gonna get rid of the uh, people we're doing automated tills like Asda. Listen, if I wanted to work in a supermarket, I'd have worked in a supermarket. Automated stuff, computerization, it, it's not trustworthy. And that's why electric cars are not trustworthy. It doesn't work. I certainly won't be traveling on an aeroplane. Would you travel on an aeroplane with one? Ah, I'm gonna get off here, one second. There's a Porsche garage just there. I'm going to go and see if it's got a fast charger. go right let's get this thing charged up excellent right here we go let's get the thing charged up and I can use my Porsche charging card as well so we can see exactly how much it's cost me Now at the moment I'm on 25% and 56 miles. So come on, let's get this thing charged. Authentication in progress. Initiating charging. Just waiting now.
So it's three o'clock. It's preparing. Oh, here we go, 25%, here we go. Oh, right, I tell you what, actually, I've got to show you this. I find, why do I find this amusing? Right, I'm not saying a word, but <laughs> why do I find it amusing, look? Here we go, look, what's so funny about this? Muff wash. Hmm. Anyway, look, a real, a real Porsche. The real Porsche there. Oh, right, I think while that's charging, uh, it's now three minutes past three. I'm just going to nip in and uh, use their loo. I'm sure they won't mind with the amount of Porsches I've had. Come on. Oh, man, it's freezing. I wonder if I can nab a free coffee off them as well. Well, it's not exactly free, is it? So it's uh, 25 past three, coming up to 25 past three. We're now 67% charged. Got some free cookies, by the way. Well, they're not free, are they, basically? Um, so, 22 minutes it's been charging. So I just have to wait around a little bit longer, I guess. Right, so it's at 97% now. There's another Taycan waiting to come in. So I'm going to get out of the space. I'm going to stop charging. Uh, I'm going to move my car and then we'll, I'll tell you how much it's cost me. Right, here we go. Right, okay, so that cost me uh, 38 pounds and 52 pence. Um, I basically, it took 42 minutes um, and I charged 64.63 kWh. So 38 pounds 52 to get me up to, what was it, 90, one second? Ninety-seven percent charge, and that's now given me two hundred and twenty-four miles uh, of range. Um, there's another guy up there. I moved out of his way because he came, and you're only really supposed to charge up to eighty percent because that's the uh, it goes slower after eighty percent. So uh, that's another downside to it. Anyway, uh, that uh, is all from me today. But it just shows you really, it's not that it's, it's, it ain't that much cheaper to own an electric car. And personally, I certainly don't think it's the future. I mean, I went into Porsche here uh, and I, I asked the lady if she's watching, I'm sorry, she says, don't say anything. I said, would you rather have a 911 or a Taycan? She went, 911. Um, and they've actually, the gentleman here, the salesman, they've actually put the McCann 4x4 all electric back. I think that's to 2024 now. Uh, the box does not come in out till something like 25 or 26, 2026. So they're being put back and uh, the 911 will probably, probably never go electric, it'll be hybrid if anything. So it isn't the future. Honestly, please don't buy an electric car. I've bought one. It's not going to save you any money. 
you're being lied to it's just one big lie but that is just my opinion i've got to say that it's just my opinion you make your own opinion and drop your comments in the comment section down below who am i just a guy with an electric car from mansfield anyway that's all from me today make sure you hit that subscribe button i hope you've enjoyed the journey along the way uh, and i'll see you guys in the next one thanks for watching now then i just might have that 911. Now then, my friends, are you thinking of buying an electric car, an EV? Uh, well, if you are, hold it right there. Let me help you out. Let me save you a lot of time, money, and a lot of tears, because I've got one right here. The Porsche, uh, Porsche, I can't even remember what bloody car it is. <laughs>